All right, we have an example that puts everything together. Let's read. The score for senior students in Sunnyview High School on the critical reading portion of the SAT are normally distributed with a mean of 500 and standard deviation of 120. So we have mu. We have mu equals to 500. Standard deviation is equals to 120. And then random sample is 36. 36. All right. We assume that all senior students in this high school represent the populations. So A, I want to calculate the probability that the mean score is at most 485. Let's be very careful with the notation. So in part A, I am asking for the mean score is at most. So that is probability x, no, x bar is at most less than or equals to 485. Not x anymore, the mean score I am comparing a group of people. So this is z less than or equal to 485 minus the mean divided by sigma over square root of n. And then you have to calculate this for me. So probability z less than or equal to. So this is how I do this in a calculator. I do everything in one click to get rid of all round of error. So let's go to calculator. So we have a 485 subtract 500 close parenthesis divided by open parenthesis 120 divided by the square root of 36 and then we get out of the square root close parenthesis we have negative 0 0.75 and then this is probability Oh, actually, it's, it's no longer probability anymore. We have to get to the calculator command. I usually write the calculator command out. So this is normal CDF. Let me make the calculator smaller because we, we want more space on to do the writing. So that is from negative infinity to negative 0 0.75, 0 and 1. In case you don't, you don't know why the negative infinity is on the left side, we can draw a picture really quick. So this is a picture, we have zero in the middle, negative 0 0.75, less than or equal to, this is the area that we are looking for. And we have negative infinity on the left end. So that's why small on the left, big on the right. And then you do your normal CDF. So second vars, normal CDF. And then you have negative infinity. So you type negative one, not, not minus one, negative, the key between decimal and enter, negative one, second comma, nine, nine, and then comma, negative 0 0.75, and then comma, zero comma one. So we have zero point two two six six. That is the probability that you are looking for. There is a one step command to get to get the probability. You have to use the 485. So that command is normal CDF, you start at 485 from negative infinity to 485. You don't need to standardize. The calculator will standardize it for you. And then the mean is 120. The standard deviation is a little bit different than the previous uh, chapter. So the standard deviation or standard error is 120 divided by the square root of 36. So this is one step to get to this answer. I can quickly do that for you. So no, second was normal CDF, uh, negative infinity to 485 comma, and then 120 comma, we do 120 divided by the square root of 36. Uh, close parentheses for that. Actually, uh, the closed parentheses should be uh, close the entire. Let, let, do you see that the 36 should be close the entire calculator command? So I assume that I can do delete. Can I retype this? Yep, I can. Second. And then you type the x square key, 36. The, the trick is you have to type the right arrow. So to get out of the square root, and then you close parenthesis. So now is, um, okay, what's wrong here? Sigma. Oh, see the problem. So this is a 
the mean is not 120, sorry. The mean is 500, see? The, the answers, they don't match, so that's why there is a mistake. Now, okay, actually, uh, since I type a mistake, I don't want to type everything again. I want the same line. How do I do this? You listen, you type second, and then you hit the enter key. Do you see the word entry? Above the enter key, entry means you want to pop the previous commands out. And then all you have to do is you change the, you correct this, so we delete that. And then we type, the mean is 500, right? So five, yes, oh, it is kind of like override. It works fine in the um, in your regular graphing calculator. So this one is a little bit different from the graphing calculator. So it looks like I have to retype it. 120 divided by the square root of 36. So let me make sure everything is right. Yep. You press enter. See, you get the same probability. 2266. 2266, not 667. 2266. Yes, 66. So this is one step to get the answer so now we have to uh, scroll up so I will just read the problem for you okay the next one is at least 518 so once we pass this you won't see the problem anymore at least 518 so B is probability that X bar is greater than or equal to 518 at least means 518 or above so that is probability Z greater than or equal to 518 minus 500 divided by 120 over the square root of 36 and then you get this in your calculator so let me just clear what we have right there so parenthesis 518 minus 500 close parenthesis divided by open parenthesis 120 just look at my calculator 120 divided by square root of 36 so square root of 36 right arrow close parenthesis and then we have probability z is greater than or equal to 0 0.9 so this is you have a standard normal graph mean equals to 0 0 0.9 this is a greater than so you have normal cdf from 0 0.9 to positive infinity, 0 and 1. So second was normal CDF, 0 0.9 to positive infinity, 1 second comma 99, 0 and 1. All right, you have 0 0.1841. So that is the answer to this question. And then the shortcut, one step, normal CDF, this is from 518 to positive infinity. The mean is 500. I'm not going to make that mistake. This again, 120 divided by square root of 36. This is one step to get this answer. Let me do that as well. Second bars, normal CDF, 518 comma positive infinity, 500 comma 120 divided by the square root of 36. All right. See, you get the same answer. So that is a part C, and then we have a part D, part, oh, part B, and then we move on to part C. Part C is a between. So part C, uh, so this part, we have to move this picture down because we need more space for uh, part C. Move that picture down. So now we are doing Park C. Park C is between 492 and 560. So 492 less than or equal to X bar less than or equal to 560. Every single problem follows the same method. The only thing that are changing is they change the numbers, right? So first we standardize. So that is 492 minus 5 minus 500 divided by 120 over square root of 36 less than or equal to z less than or equal to 560 minus 500 you take the whatever is given subtract the mean divided by standard error 
okay and then you calculate this in your calculator so let's clean up the previous stuff so we have 492 minus 500 close parenthesis divided by 120 over the square root of 36 close parenthesis you have negative 0 0.4 and then let me try the second enter thing. So second enter, I am going to change that. So I'm going to move the cursor and then change that. Let's see, maybe they, they do override in, in this app. So five, yep, 560 divided by 500. So I can just override the 492. And then that is uh, three. Okay, so the next step is uh, normal CDF from negative 0 0.4 to positive 3, 0 and 1. Let's see what do I get. Uh, the graph, this is a 0 from negative 0 0.4 to 3. The area should be pretty large. So this is the probability that we are looking for. Second bars, normal CDF, you have negative 0 0.4 to 3 and then 0 and then a 1 that is approximately 0 0.654 four decimal places right so we keep on one so that is how you get the probability the one step i will show you of course that is normal cdf you start at 592 you terminate at 560 the mean is equal to 500 the standard deviation is 120 divided by square root of 36 this one i leave that to you this is one step to get to the answer so that is part c and then part d is no less than so part d is no less than what is no less than no less than what no less than 600 the opposite of less than is greater than or equal to all right so we start the work so probability z greater than or equal to you take the given number from problem subtract the mean the mean is 500 right and then divide by 120 over square root of 36 you close the parentheses and then you have to tell me what that equals to so we have a uh, clear that 600 minus 650 close parenthesis divided by open parenthesis 120 divided by the square root of 36 that is negative 2.5 hmm. 650 what a mistake second enter got to fix my mistakes that is a 500 okay that is a uh, five six hundred minus five hundred right so let me make sure everything is right because i don't want to redo this again no less than so greater than 600 minus the mean let's see divided by 120 over square root of 36 so that is greater than or equal to five the reason i make this problem is because i want to show you the right end so this is a five and then we have to draw a picture of course we need to move that away if you use a perfect scale zero according to the empirical rule so three and negative three they covers almost everything but you have a five what is the five five is like right here and then you only have one tiny little bit of probability so this one the probability must be so small the calculator will use a scientific notation so this is normal cdf from five to positive infinity zero and one let's see how small the probability is second verse okay they want me to make this bigger right don't they second second verse normal cdf from five to positive infinity one second comma nine nine and then zero and then a one enter see this is a 2.87 times 10 to the negative 7 the e minus 7 is base 10 raised to 7th power negative 7th power 
So we have two two point eighty seven times ten to the negative seven. So when you see this, that means the probability is so small, it's so close to zero. The decimal is zero point six zero. 287 so this is so small close to zero right but it's not exactly zero not exactly zero means that is possible but the chance is very 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 small all right so that is part d and then for part e okay if the sample size is 25 what can you say about the sampling distribution so 25 is less than 30 right so in part e 25 is less than 30 that means i cannot guarantee so the distribution of x bar you can say the sampling distribution of x bar is not normal But if the score follows normal distribution, then they then they will be normal. But if you don't know what the distribution is, then we cannot say the sampling distribution of X bar is normal because the sample size is too small. So and then F and then 6 is greater than or equal to 30. So since the sample size is big enough, so the sampling distribution of X bar is normal with mean mu and standard error equals to sigma divided by square root of n which is the denominator of the normal standardization process all right so moving on to uh part g part g is the top 10 percent so if you apply for a really famous uh, university they want you to be the top 5%, top 4%, top 3%, right? So you took this SAT and they want top 10%. If you are top 10.5%, they don't take you. Okay, how many points do you need? What is the minimum score to be placed in the top 10%? That is what we are trying to find out. So in part G, top 10%, we have to draw a graph, top 10 this is a standard normal curve, zero. This is a Z. This is my area. This is a 10%. What is the Z? The Z is inverse norm, 10%, zero and one. So what is that equal to? Right, let the calculator do it. Second vars. Okay, looks like if the window is too small, they won't show anything second vars inverse norm I have 10% and then 0 and then a 1 what do they have they have negative 1.282 of course your SAT score cannot be negative this is a standardized score right yep everything is fine is this the score I want nope this is on the left side the one the z i have is on the right side so my z the one that i need is 1.282 this is your standardized score so to be the top 10 percent you must be at least 1.282 standard deviation above the average again to be the top 10 percent you must be 1.282 standard deviation above average but how many points do you need exactly so the, to get the point, remember this, we have z equals to x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n. We do it backward. I don't know what the average is. I have to minus the mean, which is a 500, right? And then divided by 120 over square root of 36, that equals to 1.282. And then you solve for x bar. So solving a simple equation. So uh, solving a simple equation speaking of equation let me make one really really simple for you so let's say we have x minus 5 divided by 2 equals to 10 how do you solve for x so first you take 10 div 10 times 2 and then you add 5 to it right if you don't like jumping steps so you multiply both sides by 2 so you have 20 x minus 5 equals to 20 and then x equals to 25 that is how you solve this type of equation 
and then back to this problem. So x bar is equal to 1.282 times 120 divided by square root of 36, and then you add 500 to it. So this, yes, we can do this in one step. So in a calculator, you can do 1.282 times 120 divided by square root of 36. You don't need parentheses because that is the correct order of operation. And then you add 500 to it. So your score is 525.64 or above to be the top 10%. You need this many points or above. If you miss a point, then you are not top, then you are not top 10%. If you miss a point, they don't take you because you are not top 10. Uh, part H, uh, usually no one cares about this, but this is about practice, so we have to do it anyway. The bottom 20%. You don't want to be the bottom 20%, right? So the bottom 20%. So part H, which is uh, bottom, right? Bottom means the smallest. Smallest is on the left. Zero. So this is 20% uh, on the left. And then what is the Z? The Z is inverse norm, 0 0.20, 0 and 1. So we have second verse, inverse norm, 0 0.20, 0, 1. So we have negative 0 0.842. Of course, that is not your score. That is your standardized score. So to be a top to be the bottom 20 percent you have to be you have to be 0 0.842 standard deviation below average wow that's bad right okay so we have x bar minus 500 divided by 120 over square root of 36 that equals to negative 0 0.842 and then you solve for x bar so you have x bar equals to negative 0 0.842 times 120 divided by square root of 36 and then you add 500 to it so what is this negative 0 0.842 times 120 divided by root 36 no parentheses is needed because the order of operation is correct and then you add 500 to it so this is a 483.16 points or below if your, your point is this or below, then you are the bottom 20%. And then the last part, we will calculate the middle 46%. So that is a part I, the middle 46. So we cut 46% right in the middle. So this is my 46 exactly in the middle. So I still have some on the left side and right side. So we take the 100% minus 46 divided by 2. Yes, you don't want to take any chances. Yes, that's fine. We do everything in our calculator. Minus 46 divided by 2. So that is a 27. So this is a 27%. This is a 27%. And then we have a Z1. We have a Z2. So what is your Z1 equal to? Your Z1 is equal to inverse norm, 0 0.27, 0 and 1. So second verse inverse norm, 0 0.27, 0 and 1. So that is negative 0 0.613. And then on the other side, we take a positive 0 0.613. We don't need to change the number because the graph is symmetric. Now, we have to evaluate, calculate, uh, we have to solve two equations, x bar minus the mean divided by 120 over square root of 36, that is the standard error, equals to negative 0 0.613, and then do one for a positive, that equals to 0 0.613. Uh, this we can uh, do something convenient, I will show you in a minute. So that is negative 0 0.613, multiply the denominator, and then you add the 500 to it. So what is x bar equal to? Negative 0 0.613, and then times 120 divided by square root of 56, of 56, 36, my mistake, and then you add 500 to it.
so that is 487.74 i know uh no one wants to type this again because of the negative right yes i understand you don't want to type this again so now watch move over to my calculator so all you have to do is you type second enter so this command pops out right and then you move your cursor if you are using a ti-84 it's flashing right so the flashing cursor make sure you have that on the negative side did you get that the negative sign is flashing and then you click the del the delete one time only don't click it twice one time okay no sticky fingers one time you click the del one time but before you click that the cursor must be flashing on the negative so on my my side i should put that on the left and then click del so that that one is 512.36 so 26 if your score is between them then you are the middle 46 percent so that is how we put everything together in one big application problem so uh this is the end of central limit theorem i can give you a preview of the next section so in the next section this is what is going to happen so so far we have x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n right so this one is a z we can call that a z procedure now a big what if what if sigma is unknown you don't even know what it is so if sigma is unknown then this can we are not able to get the z right sigma is unknown we are not able to get the z so what is the closest number to sigma sigma is population standard deviation right it's the closest number to sigma is a sample standard deviation so if sigma is unknown let's copy this one more time minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n if sigma is unknown then we are no longer using sigma if we will replace sigma with s sample standard deviation so that is the closest thing to standardize we are not going to call this a z we are going to call this a t so this one is a t distribution when you use the sample standard deviation the sample size matters so the n matters a lot in a t distribution we will get to this in the next section all right i will see you over there